We want stable families, living peaceful, healthy life in prosperity and physical security, while free to pursue our own spiritual or religious beliefs. <clears throat> we want adequate, nutritious food, clean water, clean air for fertile landscapes, with time for family, friends, and community, and leisure for cultural and other pursuits. We want real education in contextual decision making. So we use the word contextual decision making because all the decision we take should be keeping the context in mind. And that education is real education. To live in harmony as a being in the ecosystem we live in. Now how we have to behave, which will be brought about by behaving with integrity as a being with all life forms, by ensuring them to live their lifespan performing their functions. So we discussed today, being open, tolerant, non-judgmental, honest and respectful, ensuring mutual respect and support for humanity as we live with each other and our environment in harmony. All to be ensured for many generations to come on a foundation of regenerating soils and biologically diverse communities on Earth's land, in our rivers, lakes and oceans. So this is the context. This is from the Shastra Ishopanishad. Om Purna Madaha, Purna Midam, Purna Purna Mudachyate, Purnasya Purna Maya, Madaya Purna Meva Vasishyate. These are the highlights of the Vedic paradigm. That it is syntropic. Increasing population is not a problem, it's a resource. Resources are available at site. While technology is sometimes important, Biodiversity is much more powerful for creating a future we want. Nature is self-organizing and relentless. There are no parts in nature. Thinking in whole is critical to making better decisions. We're waiting for your click. Okay. Ecosystem literacy. Understanding from the land what she is trying to tell you to do. To become a land medic, even though we may be owning a farm, but factually we are managing an ecosystem in which we are a being. That this understanding has to come. So organic movement is built on a fundamental principle. The birthright of all living things is health. That is a fundamental principle that health first. This law is true for soil, land, animal, and man. The health of this four is one connected chain. So this is the most important point to understand that the health of soil, plant, animal, and human is one connected chain because we are managing an entire ecosystem, not only a farm to grow our food. We are managing an ecosystem. Any weakness or defect in the health of any earlier link, so soil, then plant, then animal, and then human. So if in any of the three, you know, so any weakness or defect in the health of any earlier link in the chain is carried on to the next and succeeding link until it reaches the last, namely humans. The widespread vegetable and animal pests and disease are the evidence of a great failure of health. The plant, which is second in the chain, and animal, third link of the chain. As a consequence of this failure in the plant and animal, there will be impairment of health in the human population, the fourth link. This general failure in the last three links is to be attributed to failure in the first link, the soil. The undernourishment of the soil is at the root of all. So in that video, he said, poor soil leads to poor people. It's, it's the soil which has to be protected. Hmm? So who went to the Lord? Mother Earth went to the Lord, right, for protection, as we read. So she, she has to be protected. This is the duty of Kshatriya, to protect land and cows. That is the first duty. Without that, nothing will... So the center of Varnashram is cows, protecting the cows. Nothing will come forward otherwise. We may have all kind of wonderful plans and procedures and policies to do, but till the time we do this connecting cows and land, connecting cows and calves, other things won't follow. Hmm? That is the foundation of the program. So it's not the soil itself, it's the soil life that is the most important element. So when we talk about soil, it is about the soil life. 
desertification means now there is no life in the soil. Everything we have, by our management, we have finished the life and become the desert. So this has some description of what is micro and macro life that is available. Soil life, one tablespoon of soil has approximately one billion soil microbes. Just imagine, one billion, just in one tablespoon. This is talking about a healthy soil, which is you know, going on the nature's principle. The life below in one square meter, this is all um, more scientific, we, we can see it. Soil health is defined here, the continued capacity of a soil to function as a vital living ecosystem that sustains plants, animals, and humans. So this is what is the definition of soil health. She should be capable to be sustaining the ecosystem and that sustains the plants, animals, and humans, all three. That is, a, that is a function of the soil. Can we expect this continued function capacity from a soil that is bare, in other words, which is hungry, thirsty, high fever, as soil gets heated up because she's exposed to direct sunlight. So we can't expect this from a soil. We are looking now. Bleeding landscape, a land that permits the soil to get eroded when it rains. Are we able to produce more food than eroding soil? So today, four times soil is getting eroded than the amount of food we produce. That is the global statistics. So more soil is getting eroded than the food we produce. So, so, so they are adding bleeding landscape. A landscape that has third degree burns. So this is another thing. We are setting fire on the soil. This soil is naked, hungry, thirsty, and running a fever. It's always direct sunlight. So no life. Everything is gone. And so comes the elephant. When, when poor, there is poor soil, all problems. He said in, uh, refugees, species extinction, floods, droughts. Hmm? malnutrition, anything we think we can think of any challenge is can just be assigned to this because the, our soils are not protected. So such poorly managed landscape ultimately leads to this elephant. So to achieve the quality of life we are looking for, we need a holistically managed landscape. Without agriculture, is it possible to have a city stock market banks, university, places of worship or army. Agriculture is the foundation of civilization and stable economy. So we could realize this and there was no vegetables, fruits. In COVID times, everything was locked down. It was difficult to survive. Just imagine if it continues for another two years. Everything will just collapse. You can't continue. Even the deity worship can't be continued. No banks can be operational. No university can function. Nothing will function. So agriculture is a foundation of civilization. So our soil is our future and quality soil means quality life. So if you want to achieve the quality life we are talking about, we have to improve the soil. So firstly, we need to regenerate the soil to practice sustainability. So today we are on a state where the soils are degenerated. This is where we are. So we want to re regenerate it, what we need to be, and then sustain it when we get there on the regenerative level. So how to do that? How to convert dirt or dust into a living soil? So today what we see is a dirt. Mm -hmm. Healthy soil and dust. This is a difference you can see in the color. This is how it looks like and the structure is also shown. There is no life without soil and no soil without life. So if there is no life, you cannot call it soil even. It's a, it's a, it's a dust, it's a dirt. So. So here we have an example of forest now. Forests on its own without human intervention is fertile. No fertilizer is needed. No erosion or leaching. No irrigation needed. Effective rainfall. Loose aerated soil. So no plowing needed. No pesticides. Self-renewing, resilient, more productive over time and seemingly effortlessly. So we don't have to do much. This is from Bhagavatam. The natural products created by the Lord should be utilized to maintain the body and soul of all living entities. 
the necessities of life are of three types to produce from sky earth and from the atmosphere the similar thing will expand it and by, by tomorrow not everything will be covered today so dirt is thirsty hungry wounded bleeding and with burns soil cannot grow or form in the absence of plants this is the first thing if you want to grow a soil or if you want to regenerate the soil we need plants so in any any land to regenerate need plants to be going on photosynthesis is the process by which the soil can live and become more fertile so if the photosynthesis is not happening the soil cannot become fertile the photosynthetic capacity of the soil and the rate influences soil building so it depends on the diversity of the plant and the coverage of the area we are holding if the, the soil is 100% covered with green plants then the photosynthetic rate is more and the, when the diversity is more the capacity is more so it depends on how much biodiversity we invite on the soil photosynthesis fuels all life on earth so basically photosynthesis is the system through which the lord feeds all life form so for, for photosynthesis to happen there should be living roots on the land sorry photosynthesis it will come photosynthesis will come we have videos on there the nature's process to build soil plants with sunlight and water perform photosynthesis they pull in carbon from the air and turn it into carbohydrates sugars then they pump some of those sugars down through their roots to feed microorganisms who use that carbon to build soil. Voila, carbon moved. Plants pump it in and soil stores it. Nature's living technology is amazing. So this is the primary function of plant to perform photosynthesis. But when we generally think, what is the function of plant? We we go on the utility part. It will give us fruits, vegetables, flowers. That is utility. That will follow. It's not that we don't want it. It will only follow. But we have to allow them to perform their function. So so we, then we cannot uproot any species. We uproot them because we don't understand that they are performing their function for the Lord. We think that it is something unwanted. So we uproot it. plants with Sorry. sunlight this does not have sound we just have to read so in in nutshell what we are what we are trying to understand from here is through the process of photosynthesis the plant is feeding the soil life and the soil life is feeding the plants so they are not competing there is cooperation they are all feeding the plant making it more healthier only it's not that they are trying to damage the plant this is how the system is designed this is about water infiltration now
So the advantage of having the soil covered. This is, this is also video. It's not working. We will see it later. It's some arts not coming. When you're here. looking at the above ground part of the plant that most people see and the roots down into the soil, that plant is putting out seeds. Start moving. Every bit moving. of the surface of that plant is pouring out food to feed the proper sets of microorganisms in the balances that the plant requires. So it's putting out what yeah. is called in the scientific world, exudates. The fruit, the blossoms, sure. all of the surface, sure. leaves, bark, stems, looks at everything above on ground that plant of the plant that puts out an exudate, the roots down and the, the purpose of the plant. One second, some from Yeah. When you're looking at the above ground part of the plant that most people see and the roots down into the soil, that plant is putting out foods. Every bit of the surface of that plant is pouring out foods to feed the proper sets of microorganisms in the balances that the plant requires. So it's putting out what's called in the scientific world, exudates. The fruit, the blossoms, all of the surface leaves, bark, stems, everything on that plant is putting out an exudate for the purpose of growing bacteria and fungi. And that's really the only reason the plant's putting those foods out. Down in the root system, all of the roots, the structural roots, the lateral roots, the root hairs, the finest, they're all putting out foods to feed the bacteria and fungi. And of course, if a plant was putting out food that would feed a disease-causing organism, the plant would be dead. So when this plant grown its roots through the soil, starts pumping out all this food, the bacteria grow, the fungi grow, and we have now a million, million bacteria per teaspoon of soil around that root system. We have you know, miles and miles and miles of fungal hyphae around the root system. So we've got a castle wall. We're protecting. And if the plant's doing that, how's it doing it? Through the exudates, through the foods that it's putting out. Simple sugars, protein, and then carbohydrate. What is that a recipe for? Cakes and cookies. So your plant is dumping cakes and cookies all over its surface, every single surface, putting out cakes and cookies to feed these bacteria and fungi so they grow to really high numbers and are protecting that root system from all of the diseases that would be trying to come in. So in a healthy soil that has the proper set of biology, that plant is going to be able to grow everything it needs to grow to protect that root. And of course, then if we've got all these bacteria and fungi growing, here come the predators of the bacteria and fungi. And when a protozoan eats a bacterium, it releases nutrients in a now plant available form. They release nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, magnesium, calcium, iron, zinc, copper, you name it, the whole list of nutrients that your plant requires. They release those nutrients in a plant available form. As long as we maintain that biology in the soil. This is one. So this, this is what happens by photosynthesis. Biology comes back. And this, even though nutrients are there in the soil, make it in plant available format, only this biology can do it. You might think that we will do a lot of things to bring this in our system, but it, it doesn't synthesize it with us. So it is very, very important that we should, it means stopping the photosynthesis is like cutting the branch on which we are sitting. If we stop the photosynthesis on our landscapes, we are cutting the branch on which we are sitting. That is, that can be the biggest wrong decision we can take. So we have to prevent that.
that will that will have social impact that will have economical impact that will having spiritual impact and also environmental impact. it's very very important when you're looking at the above ground so there are two pathways to start this process number one is covering the soil with mulch you know dry grasses because we don't have our soil is so degraded that nothing grows on it so we have to start the process with that and the number two process is where there are living roots then it will evolve to that stage so these are two different systems to uh, do the process but you can see the second is so effective only in the first you lose 60 to 80 percent of the work done and in the first only 20 30 percent of the carbon dioxide goes back the rest becomes in a more stable form of carbon and is stored there so it is very important to have living roots decomposition pathway and humification pathway they are described like that now what is photosynthetic capacity and photosynthetic rate we did this in the classroom there we can bring these two apparatus tomorrow. It's called a fractometer and thermometer. So with thermometer, we measure the photosynthetic capacity, and refractometer measures the nutrient value of the plant. So the more diversity means better is the nutrient content, and photosynthetic capacity means more cover, more more period of the year that measures the capacity. That means the soil is not heating up. So that is done through a thermometer, and the nutrient is done through the refractometer. So, like the, on the left, if you see, the soil is not fully covered, but on the right, it is fully covered. So, the photosynthetic rate is better on the right, and also capacity is better on the right. So, the left, if you see, there is only one kind of crop. It's a um, on whole whole landscape, as we can see. So, the photosynthetic rate and capacity both will be low in that. So we need biodiversity, full cover, and year round. That increases photosynthetic rate and capacity both. So here it is 100% covered, but it is through dry grass, not the living roots. So this is not the ideal situation, but it can be a good start. This is, this is what we want to achieve. Each plant supports its colony of microbes. The greater diversity plants, the greater diversity of microbes. So more diversity we have on our land, better will be the soil life because every plant has its own set of microbes. So, and again, each plant has its own set of birds. So this is, it is also connected. <clears throat> so Prabhu looks after the farm on the Kutu side. So we, we need each, each plant supports different microbes. So the greater biodiversity, the greater diversity of microbes. The plants are the be all and the end of all our landscapes. Photosynthesis supports all life on earth. Without photosynthesis, there would be no soil. So this is the function of plant to perform photosynthesis. To be free from the paradigm of pest attack. He says, insects are nature's garbage collectors and diseases are her cleanup crew. So, uh, we cannot be thinking that insects are pests, they are unwanted, and kill them because they are also invited by the plant for a reason and they should be welcome. All this So, what some of the herbicides, pesticides, and fungus? We are skipping some videos. Uh, now the BRICS dictates the price. So what is BRICS? BRICS is the nutrient count of a food or fruits we are consuming. So when the BRIC is above, in this photo you can see when the BRIC is above 15, the price is double. So where the BRIC count is 10, it is valued at $2. And when the BRIC is 15, it is priced as $4. So BRIC means it is fully healthy. No insect attack the plant. That means it is fit for humans to consume. But when it is not fully healthy, the insects will be coming on the crop, signifying that there is some deficiency in the system still. So they are not competing. It is nature mechanism to signify or to 
bring it to our notice that there is some deficiency still. So we need some more correction in the system. But what we understood is they are competing, they are eating our food. So we removed them to save our food. But when we started consuming that food, our health deteriorated. So this is accepted that when the nutrient value is more, and this happens when we follow this principle of ecosystem, the picks above, above 14 break means there is no insect attack on there. This is how the scientific people are relating to it now. But for us, it is to following the principles. This is our job, facilitate carbon bomb to feed the soil. Like this is a video also. Mm -hmm. This is a video. So why are you not coming? Four seven. Why? Right here. This is a slow motion video showing liquid sun leaking into the soil, feeding microbes. This is our job, producers. Four seven, why? Right here, this is a video. Sorry. Okay, so this video is somehow not functioning. Four seven. Why? Right here. This Only audio is coming. Motion video showing liquid sun leaking into the soil, feeding microbes. This is our job, producers. Energy flow to feed these guys. Anyways, without sound, audio, video, anyways. So yeah, uh, the the to the roots they release the exudates and feed the soil life, and the soil life feeds the plant. This is what we heard in the videos, and through this process, the carbon in the atmosphere is is stored in the soil. 
in a more stable form because this different kind of soil life which is can it can store for a longer period and our environment the climatic change also we are facing today the co2 increase of co2 also decreases so the point is the function of plant is to do photosynthesis so we cannot remove any living plant from the soil we cannot think that it is competing with the next crop this is not possible this is a paradigm given to us this is just a paradigm so we keep working on removing and the scientists have tried to remove so many weeds as they call but they have not succeeded in one even today billions and billions of dollars are spent but they keep growing because nature wants it to correct so it is growing again every year it grows every year it grows but we think that they are competing but in two sense they are cooperating with the system but because of our poor understanding we keep killing them so what happens when soil organic matter increases in the soil so because of our exercise of removing the plants going on its own removing the animals from the land our soil has become a dirt or a dust where 74% is sand 10% hardly is air 15% water holding capacity and organic matter is hardly 1% so when india became independent our organic matter was 3% and more average organic chemistry whole of india and today it is even less than 0.3% so it has already deteriorated by 90% because of our farming practices there is no other reason only our decision to farm the way we are farming so if the organic matter will increase the aeration will increase the water holding capacity will increase and there will be more organic matter in it so the the carbon can be retained more and another advantage we have of this is the with every 1% increase in organic matter the water holding capacity increases by 1 lakh liter in every acre of a land so if the organic matter is 1% it becomes 2% it can hold additional 1 lakh liter water just in the top soil one acre top soil so soil is the best reservoir to store water this is how we have to make our rainforest effective so we are looking for water here around we make water tanks we make irrigation systems but this is nature's irrigation system this is how the soil stores water <clears throat> but because there is no organic matter left now because of our farming practices there is no water left soil is the biggest reservoir of water the flowers are the linchpin of the world so the soil life is the real flowers because this bacteria fungi nematodes protozoa so many things she was explaining in the video they are all categorized differently they have their different functions to perform and their populations are in billions so they keep the soil more aerated because they keep moving in the soil the aeration is there the softness is there but because now the soil life is gone the soil is more compacted because there are no living roots the soil is more compacted so the roots and the soil life fed by the plants constitute the real population <clears throat> so this i this i was explaining also what sin or damage a fisherman incurs in the course of one full year the same is incurred by a driver of plow share made of iron in the course of a single day so when if somebody is using a metal plow to plow the field the sin he incurs is more than a fisherman which he incurs in the one full year because so many life is killed by that process plowing erodes our soil and it's it's life pretty radical either any farmer but looking at some old footage from our farm the damage it causes is now pretty obvious this is our fields back in the 80s the life in the soil is a feast for the birds after 20 years of the same treatment no birds the soil is dead turning the So, was clear, right? Pretty radical, either any farmer. So our aim should be to allow sunlight to fall only on living leaves and not dead leaves or bare soil. That should be the most important function of a farmer. Allowing sunlight to be, you have to harvest the whole sunlight through the nature's panel, which are plants. 
so any plant that is growing even if you go on our soil there are some trees which are surviving on the area which is ignored yes sorry you have a question yes mm -hmm. Yeah. So I agree to what you said, but the reality is something different. We are managing. It's not that we are not managing. We have managed with the best intelligence, best tools and technologies, but still two-third of our landscape is desertified already. So what, what wrong we did? So this is what we are trying to understand, that we have a paradigm to do things in a fashion, in a way, but that has degraded the situation. So we have to accept that and try to do things in a different way, which is more holistic, which is, so all decisions should accept social, economical, financial, environmental aspects should not be compromised on. Because when we farm, we only farm for humans. That is a paradigm given to us. But nature farms for all species. So what is not sounding interesting to us is interesting for some other species. But because we understood it like this, that we should farm for humans. So we see what we are seeing today. The forests are gone. And the challenges have increased. That is the reality today. So what you are thinking is absolutely correct. We all should think to have proper food. But when we think about proper food, we think about proper food for humans only. That is our limitation of thinking. We have to think proper food for all species. That is what the shift is required. That is the paradigm shift that is required. And once we start viewing like this, we will see abundance. But that paradigm is isolated now. That paradigm was never taught to us. So we, are, we have lived with this paradigm. We have grown with this paradigm. This is how the world is living today. But the reality is that with every way of our management, the challenges have only increased. I mean, we have not seen somebody has succeeded in with this practice of farming, of removing the weeds or... Uh, removing the insects. He has made any profits. Nobody has made profits. That is a reality. The nutrient has gone down. That is a reality. Water table has depleted. That is a reality. So we have to understand that the decision taken to farm uh, only for humans is the biggest problem. So, so we define monoculture farming as growing only for humans. So now they say diversity means growing different crops. But different crops, if it is again only for humans, it is still monoculture farming. So we have to grow for all. Mother Nature provides food for all. So any plant that grows is feeding a set of microbes that we have to understand. Now we have to manage it. So the word used was very correct. We have to manage it in a way that we don't uproot the plants. So if the roots are alive, the microbes are alive. So we can still manage it without disturbing the roots and have enough to be growing for all. So that management has to be changed. That the policy with the way we are managing has to be changed. Because today we are uprooting everything that doesn't make sense to us. And so the soil life has disappeared. As the previous video was showing, when the tractor was moving before, a lot of birds were coming because there was soil life. But only after 20 years, there is no soil life left. No soil life means dead soil. Now nothing will grow on that. And United Nation is already telling we have only 60 harvests left. In the first video we show in the, in the first session. Only 60 harvests left. The way we are farming now. So a serious thought has to be given to the farming practices because everything is just going in the wrong direction, despite of the best intentions. Despite of the best intentions. So, so we keep quoting forest. Forest we are not intervening. Every, everything is just green 365 days. 
there is enough drinkable water for the species there there are lakes there are ponds there are rivers there are waterfalls there are birds there are beasts all kind of animals living there they are super healthy mm -hmm. sorry i couldn't get it sorry huh? that we should do for us that we can do for us what is the problem and then again sorry no no that, that is another paradigm trees blocks the sunlight is another paradigm it is not like that that is again a paradigm given to us that nothing grows under the tree nothing grows under the tree these are all paradigms it's not like that so the most important point to be convinced today is this question will be covered more at length but most important point to convince is that even a weed can perform photosynthesis and even a crop which we call crop also perform photosynthesis they both are performing photosynthesis a tree is also performing photosynthesis and a small plant is also performing photosynthesis and the function of plants is to perform photosynthesis this is what we are trying to understand today <clears throat> so we cannot say that what grows on its own will not perform photosynthesis it is not going to feed a life form it's not that so but we are been trained to think in a pattern where we think that what we grow is crop and what nature grow, grow is weed forest yes it will come last day we have whole forty step one step two step three step four will be covered on that day last day third day <clears throat> it has to be forest all habitats can co survive in a forest so, so brindavan was a forest krishna was living in 12 forest dwadasha kan they were all forest now we have removed the forest that is our management system so now we see degraded landscapes what we hear in dhabat and more brindavan is nowhere visible now the trees are gone fruit trees are gone bees are gone rivers are gone nothing grows on the land now so this is all because of the poor practices the land the cows are removed from the land the root cause is this if you bring the cows connect the land if they bring the cow with the cow they stay together things will start changing so very fast no humans were allowed to clean an area for their survival not that everywhere we farm for us how much do we need we need hardly half a one acre land for our survival you can just have that and rest should be allowed to happen the way it is happening for the other species it's not in the whole forest <laughs> no no No, no, no. It's not. You don't have to uproot. You have to manage it. Uprooting and managing is two different things. We 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 understand that only uprooting is the way to manage. But even without uprooting, we can manage. Uprooting is not required. Uprooting means killing that species. We can't kill that. We can prune it. We can trim it down. There are different ways to manage the plant. because now we don't have the whole ecosystem here otherwise there were different animals who were pruning it down there are giraffes to eat the branches elephants to remove the trees so they are allowed to do this as humans we are not allowed to do this so every every species has a function to perform but because of our intervention now many species have disappeared so we have to be performing these functions otherwise there is no need to do any such function for us yeah. 
Okay. So the point we are discussing is that if we allow everything to just grow the way it is growing, then what will be left for the humans? That is the point we were discussing. And so we understand that as nature provides for all, so we can have our own area for growing things, what we need, but not that we have to remove everything and think that everything is just for growing for humans. Like for today we see entire landscape is just viewed as if it is, it is provided to grow for humans. You don't grow for any other species. And any other species, if, we, if they come to take their share, we try in our best capacity to remove them. So this competitive mentality, this mentality of human doing, the competitive to be viewing things only for utility is a root cause of all problems. So this paradigm needs a change. This is a change where we have to think differently now. Because if we keep doing the same things, the result will not change. And most important part to understand here is that even though we have done this, I mean, what we are discussing now, people are already doing. They have removed the forest, removed the species. They don't allow others to eat. They are trying to remove the weeds. But what we have achieved? Only, only deterioration in the food standard, the nutrient value go, has gone from the food. So the source of nutrient is photosynthesis. This is what we are trying to talk. If we interrupt in the process of photosynthesis, you will not get a nutrient-rich food which gives you health. So the pyramid of health says that soil is at the base, then plants, then animals, and then humans. So we want good health, but this is not possible without giving proper health to soil, and then it gives to plant, then the animals become healthy, and then only humans can become healthy. We can't have a system where only we are healthy without caring about soil, plant, and animals. This is how we were thinking all these years. This is how we were farming all these years. But what we see today is the human society is facing more and more challenges in the form of diseases. So that is not the goal of life. The goal of life is to have healthy food, not just food, healthy food. And the process is to make the soil healthy. So how the soil will become healthy is what we are discussing now. Soil will become only healthy where there is soil life. And for soil life, we need living roots. And what living roots do is the process of photosynthesis. Without that, even if we are growing our food, are we getting our health? The answer is clear, no. So the whole understanding has to be sinking into this philosophy that we have to work on soil regeneration. We have to improve the soil life. We have to make the soil healthy. Then only we can get a healthy plant. Because plant is growing on the soil. And then if plant is healthy, the cows are grazing on the plant, then the cows will be healthy. And then the milk we derive, or the fruits vegetables we derive, will make us healthy. So our context is just not to grow. Our context is to allow all lifespan to perform their function. So if we think that we will not get, then we are deviating from the context we have made. Then we need to change the context. Because we have defined in our context that will allow, allow all lifespan to perform their function. So if you don't agree to this, then we have to remove that from the context. That change is required. But here we are talking on the understanding that we are agreeing to the context and we want to take our decision depending on that context. And so we cannot remove anything. So we cannot uproot anything. And this has been done. And the result is this, bare soil. We are seeing here you know, on our campus also, this was Brindavan. Everywhere green, everywhere Brindavan. But now it is not green anymore. So everywhere green means from that the inference is photosynthesis was happening continuously, 365 days. I think uh, I would like to finish and then continue with the questions. Is that okay? Because we have some more slides to run through. So our aim should be allow should be to allow sunlight to fall only on living leaves and not dead leaf or bare soil. So if the soil is bare, there will be increase in CO2 and all the water from the soil will go. And if it is covered, all the water that falls will infiltrate. And so the process of photosynthesis 
the carbon dioxide will be reduced because the carbon is stored back and oxygen is released. The photosynthesis forms the basis of the pyramid of life, not soil. It is planned that cycle soil nutrients. It is planned that create topsoil. It is plants that create good structured soil. It is plants that build soil carbon. So plants are doing all these things. So if we remove the plants, that means we are disturbing the whole cycle. Plants by their function of photosynthesis uses the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, number one, replaces it with the life giving oxygen, supports the soil microbiome, regenerate the topsoil, restore water balance to the landscape, enhance the nutrient density of food, and thus increasing the profitability of agriculture. So this is what the plants are doing. What we know plants for is only for utility. So the farther we get away from the land, the greater our insecurity. This is from Henry Ford. So living on the land is the topmost security because you have your food, you have all the things to survive the life. This is from Srimad Bhagavatam. This is Hiranyakashipu is instructing to the Asuras when he wanted to uh, uh, no, damage or disrupt the establishment of Lord Vishnu and establish his supremacy. What he is instructing? Immediately go wherever there is good protection for the cows and brahmanas. And wherever the Vedas are studied in the terms of Varnashram principles, set fire to those places and cut from the roots the trees. See, instructing, cut from the roots the trees, which are the source of life. So that the roots are the source of life. So if we are uprooting anything, we are just following Hiranyakashipu. So only three instruction given: cows, Brahman, and uprooting the trees. So strong this is. To forget how to dig the earth and tend the soil is to forget ourselves. Mahatma Gandhi, the nation that destroys its soil, destroys itself. Ultimately, the only wealth that can sustain any community, economy, or nation is derived from the photosynthetic process. Green plants growing on regenerating soil. So this is the most important thing. Green plants should be growing year round. Without that, we cannot achieve anything. The soil cannot regenerate. There will be no life in the soil and we cannot get health. Our context is to have good health, good food, good air, good water. But without taking care of the soil, our landscapes, it's not possible. So we are telling, if we stop the process of photosynthesis, we are cutting the branch on which we are sitting. Okay. So when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. I think we have covered today's thing. We have time for question answers, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then we can go for lunch with the cool, cool only. Okay. Okay. Sorry for the Zoom. We don't have a interactive system available. Sorry. Now we can stop this here. Even you can remove this. I don't want this. We have to make this now. <laughs> All right, Krishna. All right. One second, bro. Okay, good. So now we have all the people who are online, at least they are. Now, if you can turn on your videos, the who is sitting here can see you. And there are some comments by devotees. So, one second, I will read those. The productivity was higher near neem trees. 
no production further this was not planned but the result showed sorry my experience was that my crops were growing better near the trees the further away they smaller the plants some plants need shade need to repeat oh, sorry over there is so there are people who have experience of growing things and they have experienced that under the tree it grows better so there are many many paradigms which we are living with and it is not our mistake but this is how we were taught so we think that it is like that but it is not the reality yes one second one second can we make them sit here and speak so that everybody can speak yeah yeah because otherwise i would be So, Hare Krishna, um, my name is Vajra Lakshmi Devidasi and I'm coming from France. I saw a uh, different example of permaculture and co-protection with a uh, garden uh, where we include uh, all, uh, all the varieties. We are not, uh, and uh, we have more time for chant and eat light food also, uh, less wheat, for example, and less rice. But we eat uh, more fruits, more milk and uh, vegetables and um, kinds of bread also done with uh, the weeds collected and uh, dry fruits and we make grow. And if we take our blood, uh, the balance was done normally. Like uh, Krishna said, uh, I just need uh, flowers, fruits, uh, we can offer me uh, water. It's, we can be also uh, more light in our uh, habits and um, not eat like uh, if we cook a Mahaprasad each day, but we can cook uh, more simply. And uh, have the garden also uh, more diversified with uh, more, more diversity of seeds. And uh, take just the minimum from the cow if they can give us, but not uh, ask more that the cow can give to a, a child and for our child, and, but not uh, sing to make a commerce or all that. If we have a simple mentality to please Krishna, we can, uh, at the level of family and more and more, and do wonderful. And also, it's what I saw. We can do that. Even if the government is. Uh, putting obstruction and always the more laws. Um, Krishna always protect his devotee and uh, the security is also there for the, the feminine part of the family and the man can work on the soil more easily. And in this case, um, yes, the question is to employ our day for our spiritual life and take care of the garden and the cows and the family. It's what I wanted to add. Sorry? Yes. So, so, so manage, we have to manage them. It is not uprooting still. Uprooting and managing different. We can cut trees for our houses when they are dying naturally. But we don't know this principle of natural dying. Because now people are growing trees to cut. The whole objective has changed. Previously, any species which lives on its own can be used. If, even if cow is dying naturally, the, it is permitted to eat the beef. And only with those cows we make our mudangas. That is, but, when, but now when we start killing the cows to make mudanga, then it is all deviation. So every species has a lifespan and it lives it accordingly. So we just have to do that accordingly. We can cut the trees 
not necessarily locked root. We just cut it. It can grow again. What is the problem? And there has to be a purpose. If we, if we just do for our own small area, like Abu is making a house now. You have your tree already, right? But it, it died, right? The tree died already. It was not growing anymore. So now we are using that. But if even if we just grow for the purpose of cutting, like for the paper industry, you know, just growing for the purpose of <coughs> cutting, then it is simple. And in the nature, if we go like total holistically, there were different animals who were disturbing the trees. Like elephant could remove uproot many trees on a day just to survive itself. So it was going on its own the whole process. But now because we are we are we are, we are too far, it is even difficult to conceive how it was functioning at that time. How everything was just perfect. Every species was having his own share of food. They were all performing their function for the Lord. So, so we think that we start with connecting the cows with the land and connecting the cows and the cow. This is from the Bhagavatam. And gradually we can start following the religious principles and then things will evolve. It might not be possible that we see everything in this life, but at least we start following the principles the way it is suggested and we achieve things, whatever comes, but at least we are focusing on that simple living. We are not killing any species for our survival. And our consciousness is more and more near to Krishna's way of living life. It's not that we want to live the life the way we want to be living, but the, the way the nature is providing. <clears throat> yes. So there is a question from online. Prabhupada Acharya, if you want to ask a question. Yes, Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, Prabhupada. Yes, Prabhupada. You are audible. Okay. Um, I'm just thinking if we expand that you had a picture of uh, row cropping and then you had a picture next to it of full uh, a field that was fully planted. There was no rows, no spaces. In terms of practical, you know, harvesting, gathering crops and all that, I mean, you'd be stepping on plants everywhere you go, right? How do you, how do you, how do you move around a farm that's fully planted, every square foot covered with crops? Because you're going to be stepping on plants wherever you go. You have to harvest something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that has to be there, and there are cows moving. Cows are harvesting every day, so this it will be covered. Actually, I think on the third day we are covering this. How we are doing the real management? How when everything is growing, <clears throat> where we grow for humans, where we grow for other species? How we may how we ensure that the other life forms are not killed? Because currently we understand that unless and until we clean the field, we cannot grow anything for us. But that is not a reality. Yeah. You have seen instances where things are growing together. It is very much, it's happening. I mean, forest is the best example to quote everywhere. And it's just a paradigm, nothing else. We think that if you don't plow, seeds won't grow. But we experimented on our farm. We just put some mulch on the land, threw the seeds and everything germinated. We didn't need any plowing at that time. So this is how forest is there. There is a lot of mulch on the soil already. The trees are shedding leaves. The mineral recycling is happening. Whenever the seeds fall, it, it grows again. Another tree grows. Who is going there to plant the trees in the forest? Nobody is growing. But these so are, are you saying we... there will be intentional planting of certain seeds for certain purposes? Yeah, that, that is a that is a question of discussion. But I mean, I would I would like to focus more on. 
today's subject of discussion. So today's our point was the context, function utility, then function of plants, function of farmer. So if, if we have any questions related to this, we, we saw many videos today because I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but mostly will be answered in the coming days. So if we, if we have specifically anything from today, what we discussed, that will be helpful. Okay, the cover crop idea that you're going to keep, you know, things growing on to cover the surface. What about in the summer when everything dies? Yeah. So this is another paradigm we have that in summer everything dies. But if the soil is regenerated, if the water holding capacity increases, even in summer, your fields can be like who is giving water to the trees? How trees are surviving in summer? We don't water them. Tap root goes down to the water. Even in our field, even in our eco farms, you will see there are certain species which are still green. Nobody planted them, nobody grew them. But the point to understand is they are performing the function of photosynthesis, those plants, even though we don't know what they are doing for us, but they are performing photosynthesis. And if you will do soil test, if we, if we decide to do a soil test of that area, that soil will be much better than the rest of the soil on the land. Because we have not intervened there and it is, it is coming tomorrow, but let me speak today. In progression, in succession, these plants will leave this space. It's not that they all 84 leg species will leave all the time. There are series of plants which are good for an environment, which are good for a soil. So when the soil goes to the next level of health or fertility, another set of species will manifest and the species which you see today will disappear. So they don't compete. So for example, we see thorny trees growing today. Land is so poor, so thorny trees are growing. Why? So that nobody will like to disturb them. No animal would eat it. So the process of photosynthesis continues. This is nature's mechanism to rectify the situation. So the carbon pump function is working, the soil is improving, and this thorny tree will live its own life and a new tree will grow from there. I will show a photo tomorrow like this. The cactus is dying and a new tree is growing. It's a natural protection given to the plant by these thorny, thorny trees, but it is regenerating the soil. Otherwise, how is, how is soil regenerating? Photosynthesis is not happening. Nothing is growing anyhow. What are the, what this, are the, these trees are going on their own. We are not. We have not planted the seeds. We are not doing irrigation. Still, they are green 365 days. How is that happening? I have to understand that. How is that happening? What are the time scales? It sounds almost like evolution. Like it's going to take a long time for things to happen. So we, we we showed scientific videos of Elena Ingham. We researched the video. She is talking that if if plants are doing something, if, if plants are feeding microbes which are going to damage them, why will they feed them? See, she clearly told them they are feeding cakes and cookies. The nature's mechanism is feeding cakes and cookies and increasing the soil life. So if this soil life is something disturbing to the plants, why would plant do it? Why would plant do it? It is given. This is this we this is resource the scientific it's Alina Ingham runs her own. Soil Institute, and they are giving so many seminars on this. And there are what so about many the timeline from, from converting dead soil into living soil? What's the time scale you're talking about? Timeline is how effectively we allow the ecosystem to function. How effectively we so take ideally, every decision. Well. How effectively we take every decision which is taking us towards our context. If we take holistic decision making, then it will only keep improving. And we become more and more conscious. We are not changing anything. The only thing we need to change is our way of dealing with the environment, our way of dealing with the species around us. But again, we are, so you're we talking are conditioned about to be no plowing. We are conditioned, we are conditioned to be thinking everything with a timeline. That we this should be done in two months, this should be done in six months, this should be done in one year. This is how we are trained to be thinking. But that thinking doesn't function in nature. Nature is controlled by the Supreme Lord. We, our duty is just to be following the function which is given for us. Because we have deviated from that, 
and we have developed a whole new school of thought. So we think like this now. But we need to unlearn these principles. We can't be timing things. It's not possible. Who, which farmer has time? Can you tell me how many how many days you planted tree will give a fruit in how many years and how much nutrients it will have and whether it will give you health or not? We have never questioned that. It's not possible to know. It's difficult to quantify that how many trees on this tree this year, how many apples will grow? Who can tell this? Nobody can tell this. So quantifying, timing, this is all current paradigms, which has nothing to do with our control. We can't control these things. We can think about it, but it, it, it gets us no, and it doesn't it, it does it gets us nothing actually. It gets us nothing. Can I say something? Yes, please. So, Hare Krishna, just in answer to answer um, a couple of the concerns, um, I don't know if you mentioned I got off for a, a little bit, but trees giving shade to plants. I have tomatoes growing next to the trees, and progressively you could literally see like a slanting line that the tomatoes near the trees were growing very well, abundantly. They were neem trees. And as, as I went further, further away on bare ground, and I didn't even do this on purpose, the plants got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, like literally like a slanting line. It was right before my eyes, I saw that. Second thing, when we are walking on the land, we're killing so many living entities. Grass, obviously we can learn the lesson that we have to be very tolerant grass, land, we can walk on the land. Obviously, we, that's why we chant Hare Krishna. Right? Because we are killing so many things, even generally. So I think minimizing the killing is our aim. But the use of pesticides and all those kinds of modern, which I know none of us agree to, that is completely um, the opposite thing. Now, the last thing about the timing and I'm not saying I'm, a, you know, like what Vishnu Namprabhu said was about the timing being, uh, you can't really tell. But my experience of using this, putting the bulls on the land, that a 20-year-old commercially farmed land, which soil was horrible. Obviously, this Ajay land has salt and there's other challenges. You have to deal with it in a particular way. After one year, when the, when the, um, after the monsoon, it just became very lush, with natural vegetation. And also I was able to grow without any pesticide, without any chemical, no fertilizer, nothing. Just using natural methods, I was able to grow 40 bags of rice on just one bigger, one little bigger. And then uh, there was like so much stuff coming out I used to take it to the, because it was a, the, the owner's house. So there were four houses and I would take bags and bags of food. And they were like, you know, uh, what am I gonna do with this stuff? You know? So it produces, yeah, it works. I mean, I'm speaking from on the ground experience with my, with the project I did. Simply by keeping bulls on the land and moving them and, uh, little bit here and there you have to adjust according to the soil um, working like that in the beginning you may have to do a little adjustment because depending on how bad the soil is because you come to a point where you, you you'll have to do some you may have to do some minimal intervention then once you, the, the target is to get to self to get it to be self-sustaining so it's not like every single year we take a crop, we plow it out, we put another crop, we plow it out, we put another crop, keep going on and on and on in this cycle. This is the modern system. But if you have a system like a permaculture system, which is completely, it's always giving you stuff. It's always giving you natural, healthy food all the time, variety according to season, according to thing. And then you're feeding all the animals, you're feeding the cows, you're feeding the bulls, you're feeding all the living entities. That is a harmonic a system of harmony. And I've, I've done that. And I didn't, I saw fat worms on my, some of my plants. And I saw so-called pests on my tomatoes. 
I didn't do anything. And because the plants were healthy in natural soil without any poison, it's like if you take antibiotics, then you're, you, need, you need probiotics to re regenerate, right? So if we put antibiotics in the soil, then the, the plants themselves also become, antibiotics means antiseptic, you cleanse, you sterilize everything. The plants also become weak, but because the plants, plants are also, uh, you can look at them as people in the sense that they have an immune system. So if their immune system is healthy, they will produce and they will not be affected by, by disease. But if you make them so weak and you put so many of the same of them you know, together, then one disease will come and say, oh, here's my food. A fungus will come and say, oh, look, there's abundance of food here. So then they will just come and they'll decimate the entire crop. So that's the importance of having different plants because they, they, they have a symbiotic relationship. Um, anyway, that's I'm just speaking from my own experience. So within one year, I already produced uh, 40 bags of rice and um, tons of, I mean, not tons, but a good quantity of, of um, other types of food. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you very much. So it's one five. I think we should stick on the time line and we can end it here. Thank you all very much. For coming. Do you know where to go for the lunch? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Hare Krishna.